My name is Kevin Smith, and I'm the vice president on the board of directors for St. Paul Rodeo and also the historian. Oh, very good. All right. Well, let's start with a little bit of history. How far back does the St. Paul Rodeo go? And, and tell me a little bit about how it got started. The St. Paul Rodeo began in 1935 in uh, the small city of St. Paul, which is now only 425 population uh, in the middle of the Willamette Valley, about 40 minutes south of Portland, 20 minutes north of St. Paul. And the little town wanted to have something, uh, some kind of a festival in the summertime. The story goes that uh, they first tried to do something in a nearby town in Mount Angel. And eventually by summer of 36, after this planning and trying the, the sample event in 35, that they, uh, they began in, in the middle of, of St. Paul, a small farming community uh, near the Willamette River, and uh, I guess that was that was the beginning. So we're saying 88 years ago we had to cancel one time, 2020, which happened to most everyone, but we seem to be back bigger than ever right now. So here we are, 88 and 89 years later, um, and it is bigger than ever. Uh, I've been to it uh, several times, and I cannot believe how much this one event um, takes over that entire community. Well, it certainly does, and I think we're well known throughout the region uh, for a big Fourth of July celebration on those days. The rodeo is a, is a week long festival now. I think that our our stadium held about ten thousand people, probably as early as nineteen fifty, and that was kind of the peak. That's where we still are. But in those days, when I was uh, first. Uh, born and, and young boy, we often would have only two or three performances or shows right next to the 4th of July. Like maybe it was July 3 and 4 only. The 4th has always been our, been our biggest day and still is the same that way. We have a 10 a.m. parade and two shows, a 1.30 show and a, and a 7.30 show in the evening. So that keeps everybody busy. It, we often end on the 4th but because of leap year and the fact that no one's figured out how to make the fourth a Monday uh, all the time, uh, we have to change up now and then. So next year coming, 2024 will be a leap year and uh, we will flip a little bit. We'll run a couple of years, uh, July two to six, and then we'll have a one to five, and then we'll kind of be back to this 30th ending on the fourth, like we are this year. That's great to hear. So uh, now from what I understand, the rodeo itself is going to be placed into the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. Tell me the, the, the thoughts of what that means to the rodeo, to the town, to even the state of Oregon. Well, it, it is a big deal. And folks who are knowledgeable about rodeo will surely understand it. But most everybody has some ideas about how halls of, of fame operate. Our mothership, I call it, which is the sanctioning organization, is the PRCA for the top uh, group of rodeos in the nation, the top professional rodeo association. They're based in Colorado Springs. And uh, there's a north-south freeway that I don't know the number of that goes right through the heart of Colorado Springs, south from Denver. And the offices for PRCA and the Hall of Fame building and courtyard itself are at the exit to Pikes Peak. And uh, we will be inducted along with eight or nine others on July 15th at that facility. And we will be then a part of the National Pearl Rodeo Hall of Fame. Um, the name that the PRCA goes by generally is, is Pearl Rodeo, uh, one word, with a big capital R in the middle of it. Uh, their Hall of Fame, uh, really our Hall of Fame, because it's all a membership organization, will include contestants, contract personnel, such as announcers, clowns, specialty acts, even animal livestock that performs in rodeo, uh, notables, and committees. You know, and in fact, we're just called uh, there a committee. It's the rodeo itself at large. 
So all of the members, all of the volunteers, of which we have many, we're, we're a bigger uh, association than most rodeo memberships or committees. We have an 11-man board now, but we have 450 in our membership who have applied and worked and volunteer every year. If you're a member of St. Paul Rodeo, it's part of the deal to participate and work as a volunteer in at least half of the performances during Rodeo Week, which would be three, and certain other times through the year. Kevin, does an honor like this help uh, gain attention to the rodeo or bring in bigger names uh, uh, as part of the rodeo circuit? Actually, I think we're kind of past that, luckily. We, we have a lot of attention, and we get all the best names. The way we assure that is we put up more money. Uh, the committee itself, St. Paul Rodeo, puts up more money, around 280000 uh, for contestant contestants to shoot for. There are also entry fees, so that total will be closer to 400000 in the pot. And uh, since we are the largest uh, ranked rodeo by, by the money factor over the 4th of July, the last two years uh, we've been the featured rodeo on the Cowboy Channel, which is just new to the PRCA in, in that time. They actually opened up their contract during COVID, uh, which was a pretty tough way of starting, but it's really worked out. And uh, we, we've done so well here uh, we were on a gradual climb with uh, setting records most years, uh, minor uh, minor changes, and minor increases. But since COVID, so after our cancellation in 2020, in 21 we set an all-time money record, and in 22 we set an all-time uh, ticket sales record. We want to get back out into the community. That's why, that's why we want to see what's going on. Absolutely. Everybody wants to be out there. You may recall in 21, it was about mid-June when the governor announced that the doors would open up for the 4th of July. So 10 days before we began, roughly. And in the next two days, all of our shows sold out. I remember that clearly. All right. So we this, looked, go ahead. We looked, we looked around and we kind of thought, well, this will never happen exactly like this again. <laughs> and, and we were right in a different way. In, in 22, it was bigger yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, so this yeah. year's this year's rodeo is June 30th through July 4th. Uh, and, Correct. And Tickets have been on sale since the end of 22 at stpaulrodeo.com. That's S-T-P-A-U-L rodeo.com. No, no period after the T. If, so, if someone's never been to the St. Paul Rodeo, can you describe for us what they may see as, as someone who may be brand new to, to this field? Well, it's not only a rodeo. You could call it a fair. We're not a county fair and we're not a state fair, but we have all the trappings of a fair, every kind of fair food that you might ever enjoy, uh, music, drinks of all sorts, fireworks every night, and then a real standard uh, layout of rodeo. So we have over that time, each night is a rodeo performance at 730 they last about two and a half hours with fireworks at roughly 10 o'clock in the evening. The afternoon shows at 1.30, similar length of time, and there will be roping events and rough stock events, the riding events uh, at this rodeo, along with always uh, a stunning specialty act. This year we have a group of three of the best trick riders in the world uh, which, who will perform midway through that show in the arena. But at the same time, there are folks who may or may not be rodeo fans or may not have access because they, they get a little bit late buying their tickets that can come to any of the parts outside the stadium and do probably an extra 20,000. Um, and there's no admission to any, any of that. There's no locked fence outside. So you only buy the products that you want, but you can walk through there with no fee. Yeah, if I remember right, this really envelops the entire town of St. Paul, correct? I have a little story about that. So um, when I first got on the board, we were looking at uh, our format. We had, we had moved from five rodeo performances to adding a PBR event, 
bull riders only, the other company. And we did that for about 10 years because it was a little different draw and it worked for us. But by the time we sort of finished with that, there was enough growth in the population here and the Western lifestyle was preferred by a lot of folks. And it was time that we could start another rodeo performance. Well, some of our PBR folks, including Ross Coleman, who was a, a big shot in the PBR in those days, his father Steve from Molala was on our board, and uh, he was retiring, but they had met Justin McKee, who was the TV voice of the PBR in those days. And we hired Justin to announce this rodeo in 2003, the same year that I began on the board. So he and I have been here going on 21 years, and he now is big time at the Cowboy Channel, which has a, a terrific contract with the PRCA. And uh, when he first came to St. Paul that very first year, he was driving the rental car from the airport and he called up Steve Coleman because he said, well, we forgot a big thing here. I'm on my way to St. Paul, but you didn't tell me how to find the rodeo grounds. And Steve just laughed and said to him, when you get to St. Paul, you'll be at the rodeo grounds. <laughs> That's, all you have to do is look a couple directions and you can't miss it. That's a, and real quick, I'll let you go here in a moment. What what does it mean to St. Paul? Um, does it does it help bring in funding at all? Does is it a is it a uh, fundraising event at all? That's a great question. Uh, and I want to first of all, I want to mention that those numbers I talked about earlier, all of those members plus another couple hundred volunteers, make this thing work. It takes a lot of people. We only have a couple paid positions. We have a manager and a couple of half time helpers for the manager. But we do uh, donate uh, because it's a small town here and Marion County has some pretty serious zoning laws. Everything has stayed fairly small and that's part of the attraction to this rodeo, the country effect. Um, because of that makes it kind of difficult for utilities um, and schools to operate with lower volume. So the rodeo in turn helps those groups as much as we can. We cause a, an uptick toward 300,000 in our own little city. Uh, we have the high school booster club selling stadium concessions at the rodeo. We have the local church selling barbecued chicken and a number of groups just like that. In addition to that, we donate to the Justin Cowboy Crisis Fund, which helps and takes care of underinsured contestants uh, when they get injured, uh, the local Providence hospital system, and others, many others. It really is a team effort, isn't it? It is. Uh, For sure it is. Well, Kevin, is there anything I left out you want to make sure we get out there? I will say that when the rodeo began with eight uh, founders, and, and until today, when we have 11 on the board, still half of our directors are grandsons and great-grandsons of those founders. And that happens a lot in rodeo. Rodeo is often in small towns. Uh, the top contestants in rodeo often come from rural areas and small towns. And uh, it's because of that, that connection to the past. And, and that's what made me emotional when I got the call Monday from the selection meeting in Colorado Springs. I felt that I had all my family with me. My grandparents and my mom and dad worked this thing every day of their life. Many of us were born into it. My dad had my job on the board for 46 years. Uh, it just doesn't happen like that very many places that I know in our world anymore. And uh, I, I know that this honors everyone that had anything to do with this rodeo since 1935. And it's a powerful story. It certainly is. Kevin, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much and best of luck this year. You're welcome. Thank you.